Hello. Hello. Welcome, finally. Thank you for following us over to the cool corner of the playground. Let me turn off my radio uh, so we don't get any crazy feedback. We are here at Janus headquarters in Goshen, Indiana. It is St. Patrick's Day. I'm not getting pinched because I got my green on. You got a little bit there too. That's fine. Takes me back to elementary school. Uh, it's a great day here in Goshen. Uh, spring is springing. We're selling a lot of bikes and we're going to talk about it today. Um, we're here at the news desk. Here's my little intro. What's good morning, the news? Grant. Yeah, good morning, Richard. <laughs> in traffic, what's, what's been going on? Well, today the weather is uh, <laughs> still cold and Great. it's supposed to be snowing more. Um, we're going to do a little roll call and uh, shout out to everybody that followed us over to the other side. We had folks from all over the country. We've got Dan uh, Bankhead, who's got a bike headed to him very soon. He's one of our newest customers. He just bought a 250, I believe. Welcome, Dan. I see some Felixes on there. Thanks, guys. Mitch, thanks for hanging out with us and answering questions about kickstands. Uh, Scott, welcome. Hello again. Jim Winters, proud owner of two motorcycles, a Phoenix and a 450, I believe. Nice. Jeep Man Dan. Uh, Patty Thornton, Kirk and Patty, your 450 is in progress or it's almost done already. Mark, nice to see you again, Mark. Uh, Mark just visited on Monday or Saturday. I forget what day it is. Uh, James Garcia, I almost said Jerry Garcia. I hope you feel as good as he does usually. Um, welcome Craig Dovell. Uh, your jacket is on the way. Craig just ordered an awesome uh, bobber jacket online. Eric Fritz, 450 owner. Welcome all. Ralph Farmer, howdy back, man. That's great. <laughs> that brings up a good point. Uh, I have to go to Rotary in a little bit and it's my day to do the jokes. And so in honor, I'm gonna start with a joke, in honor of uh, March Madness, uh, I've got four jokes for you all. Uh, being a Hoosier, my dad is a Purdue grad. Uh, I love some good IU uh, denigration, so here's a joke for you. How do you pick out an IU grad at a car wash? I don't know, Grant. They're the one riding a motorcycle. <laughs> How do you pick out a Notre Dame grad at a car wash, Richard? I don't know, Grant. They're the one in a convertible. <laughs> <laughs> How do you pick out a Purdue grad at a car wash? I don't know, Grant. <laughs> They're the one towing the convertible. <laughs> <laughs> on their tractor. On their tractor, yeah. Yep. <laughs> What's the last um, one? Got any more? That's the one, okay. yeah. I was trying to think of something about suing people. I don't know if Northwestern fans are extra litigious. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, here's what's happening today. Jordan, are we going to go on a milk run today? We are. Great. Nice. We have an awesome, this is the first uh, global premiere of our, uh, the next level of our live streams. We're going to take a little virtual tour of the inner world. The Amish, uh, some of our fabrication partners call everywhere out here the outer world, so we've turned it around on them and call it the inner world. We uh, go to the inner world on the milk run. Yeah, it's not a meditative term or a spiritual practice. It really is just down in Napanee. So uh, we're going to go uh, take a tour on the milk run. It's about 10 minutes long. It's a lot of fun. We are going to be watching comments uh, while we're watching along with you. So if you want to uh, post any questions up about how the milk run happens, yep. what's involved in that, we will be active on the comment section. Richard, virtual Richard, will take us on a milk run. And we'll come back here, talk about some parts, uh, give you the news, and bid you farewell. Sounds good. Today, we're going to do a ride along on the what we call the milk run. Uh, every weekday morning we uh, make a circuit around Elkhart County and dip into a couple of other counties as well, um, uh, dropping off and picking up different products that uh, go into making a Janus motorcycle. Uh, we have a network of local uh, craftsmen who do a lot of different processes that we don't do in heads, from fabricating aluminum fuel tanks to machining to polishing to sandblasting. We can rely on those people who have many, many, many decades of experience doing that to, to do that pro process for us as a small manufacturer. In order to not have to store a massive amount of inventory here, we're doing that on a daily basis, moving those products around. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to load all these bins into the back of the van and go to our next stop. For many components, not all of them, but for many of them, we have a bin system that the bin itself is the essentially the order for more. 
So when an empty bin shows up, our supplier, whether it's us down at TT or one of our Amish vendors or machinists, they'll know that that's, that, hey, we need more parts. And so that system just kind of keeps itself moving. Um, and it's wonderful because it's, uh, we say it's uh, reflexive, not, uh, not something that takes a lot of thought. It just, it takes care of itself. Other components, such as our chassis, we use a tag system. And the tag system works in almost the same way. Um, the tag goes along with the part. When the part is used and there's a leftover tag, that's the, that's the uh, sign that we need more, um, more parts. So we've just pulled up at TT, where we make uh, 450 chassis components and the fenders for both the 450 and the 250 line. What we have right here are 450 forks, both the vertical and horizontal, and main frames. And we're gonna load them in the back of the van and they will head out to uh, first sandblast and then powder coat. All right, so we are now headed west toward Plymouth, Indiana, toward what we call the inner world, which is a joke uh, because most of our vendors, especially when we were first getting started, all of our vendors were out in the Plymouth Napanee area, which is about 20 miles uh, southwest of Goshen. The Amish refer to where we live as the outer world. <laughs> so we, we kind of turned that around and we call it going to the inner world when we head out to our Amish uh, suppliers. Our next stop is at our laser cutter. We have been working with them since before we started Janus. When we first started working with them, they had one laser cutter in a garage bay, literally behind their, their house. And now, well, you'll see it. It's multiple, very large pole barns. They do laser cutting, plasma cutting, huge operation. And it's been really incredible to see them grow. Our next stop on the milk route is our fabricator. We have been working with Leroy and his uh, fabrication shop from the very, very beginning. We actually found him when we were making the Paragon, which was our from scratch kind of concept bike. We started that project about two years before founding Janus. And we found him because he was a, we had heard from our Amish powder cutter we were using that he had experience making bicycle frames and actually uh, race car chassis. While he, ne he was no longer doing that, he did have experience with kind of like trellis frame designs and tube frames. So that's how we found him. And we basically developed the 50cc and much of the 250 model lines on his shop floor. He would let us go in and work in the corner, and develop the tooling and the prototypes, and then, uh, then gradually put that in production. At this point, his shop makes all the the 250 uh, chassis components, some of the 450 chassis components, and all the aluminum bodywork, air boxes, fuel tanks for the 250 and 450 model line. Because we make this milk run, um, and because the Amish uh, don't drive, uh, we happen to make, we typically do a lot of deliveries for our vendors as well. We just kind of throw their stuff in the back. So that's what we just did at our laser cutter. They had a box. Sometimes it's a pallet for the fabricator, and we just, we're, we're making the trip anyway, we drop those parts off as well. We consider everybody a partner and a friend, and that's just part of the, part of the milk run. So this, uh, this is a bin right here that is being dropped off. Uh, so this will be uh, signaling that we need more of this part. So essentially, the purchase order for this component is this bin that I'm dropping off right now. Right here will be any product that is ready for us. In this case, we have 450 oil tanks, a beautiful aluminum part, all with a, both a laser cut and um, machine components all welded together. To, and the rear wheel will fit right in there. We have a batch of those in here. The next stop for these components will be at our powder cutter. Our next stop is our leather maker. Mark is his name, another Amish fella. Mark has been making our leather products for the Janus line from the very beginning. He makes all of our uh, wax canvas and leather goods as well. The rucksacks and messenger bags and tool rolls that we actually launched the 250 line with on Kickstarter and uh, 
he lives on a gravel road. Usually the gravel roads out here are in better shape than the, than the asphalt roads. Next up is polishing and sandblast. They're actually across the street from each other. Lynn and Sam uh, both work at our fabrication shop, but they have uh, side gigs that they do polishing for us and sandblasting. So we'll stop in there next. So we're here in uh, Glenn's shop who does all of our polishing. Um, and it looks like he has one 250 polished exhaust ready for us. That's what you see right here. And then these are uh, raw exhaust that we've dropped off at some point in the last week that he has not polished yet. So we just pick these up. This is on the tag system. We just pick these up when they're ready to go and we drop off more when, they, when, when they're ready to be picked up. We'll pick up this polished one and bring that back to the shop. Now we're essentially going to go right across the road to Sam's Sandblast where we will be dropping off some 450 chassis for sandblast as well as some machine parts that need powder coated, that will be powder coated, so they need to be sandblasted first. Our next stop will be at Powder Coat. So we have just picked up some freshly sandblasted chain guards for 450s, and we have a lot of other parts in the back that are headed for Powder Coat where all the chassis components on both 250 and 450 get powder coated black and then the primary color parts, so that would be fuel tanks, air boxes and fenders, headlight buckets, get powder coated whatever color uh, the customer chooses from our options. Next stop on our milk route is our machine shop, which is located in New Paris, which is about five miles south of Goshen. Don is our machinist, he runs that little shop and specializes in really fine, high detail uh, machining, uh, which can be anything from our, the carburetor parts for our 250 line to all of our axles and swing arm pivots, uh, the fork top plates, and a multitude of other, both lathe turned and three axis CNC uh, milled components. So we're gonna uh, go down there and pick up some components and head back into Goshen. And we'll take a quick look at them because they're always so fascinating to see. And this doesn't dis disappoint. These are going to be uh, pivot bushings. So these are for your front forks. Oh, we have uh, axle spacers. So these are uh, uh, these go on the 450 as well. Um, and th this is an aluminum component, which Don machines, and then he sends it out to a anodizer. I believe they're in South Bend. All right, uh, next stop is back at HQ in downtown Goshen. We've made the full circuit into the inner world to all our different vendors. Uh, today, we only have a couple of items that we're bringing back. That can vary. Sometimes it's a fork load, uh, two pallets of items coming back. It's about noon now. We left it about 9.30, about a 50 mile circuit, um, and parts are in for today. And then tomorrow, the same thing's gonna happen, the same route. More parts are gonna get moved around from one shop to the next uh, out there back here. So uh, that's how all of our local components uh, make it around the county and end up on your Janus. And welcome back to the shop. Welcome back. You're not wearing the same thing. You changed very quick. quick. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I got to turn off my sound again. That was very fun to watch. Uh, we got a fun uh, little questionnaire up in the chat. So we're kind of learning more about all the uh, benefits of this live streaming and having fun with it along the way. Looks like 37 per per people have owned, 37% of people have owned between one and five, and the other 37%, as Yogi Berra would say, one third of viewers. Sorry, one half of you. I don't remember what he says. <laughs> and the other, <laughs> and the other half. Yeah. Uh, I want to know how many, how close people have gotten to 500. Oh, Mark. I need. Mark Swag. It was probably about pretty close 300. There. Yep. Um, okay. So, uh, you know, when we have live tours in here, and when people come through, or when uh, Richard or anybody here does a an interview or talks to a you know local news or national news. 
they always kind of remark and say, that's a very interesting way to make motorcycles. And uh, why don't you blank? Why don't you offshore it? Why don't you get robots? Why don't you have an assembly line? Why don't you, you know, there's a lot of why don't yous. Uh, the best way to answer that is why do we? Why do we, Richard, why do we, <laughs> uh, a mixture of uh, practicality and pragmatism and uh, but why do we make motorcycles the way that they do, and how does that inform why we uh, why we ride motorcycles the way we do? Yeah, I mean, I think it's probably one of the reasons that you all are are interested in what we do. It's why people that come walk in the shop uh, are so fascinated by it. It's why it's why I, I, I'm excited to come in every morning, and all every employee here uh, is excited to come in here. It's probably something to do with that, and it's it's it really is true. It is not. It is not like any other motorcycle manufacturing mm -hmm. uh, operation or really many other manufacturing operations in general. Um, uh, and part of that, like we say, it, it, some of that is just related to the, the way we started Janus and the way that the scale of the operation. It's, yep. It was not started um, with a huge amount of capital and with like, you know, uh, this massive factory st starting it off. We started off very slowly and grew We've gradually. Literally square feet. On yeah, the room where we're yeah. sitting right now is, yep. is li the, these, this wall over here yep. and this wall here, this was it. That window was closed. We didn't even know that window was there at first. We had a loft above where, so business was up on the loft and assembly down below. And uh, we found a network of, uh, of vendors, mostly Amish, and in the inner world, like we <laughs> talk about a lot, um, and it was really around that system that we built the company, and it was not we didn't we didn't uh, move p select carefully Elkhart County as the right. best place. It was kind of like it just was an organic thing that happened. And so much of the why of what we do is baked into kind of the the a vision of a, a different kind of motorcycling and a different kind of um, a different kind of endeavor. Yeah. I mean, just yeah. even the, the very, like the way, you know, it's a choice to, for people that work here, and it's not, it's not just a choice for people that work here to do something different, but it's the right. choice for the owners that buy a bike here to do something completely different, and that's really what we're kind of learning really in recent years. Yeah, you were kind of, I mean, it's, it was, uh, you, uh, a couple months ago, you know, somebody asked you, you know, why did you start, or, you know, whatever, it was kind of just like, well, we just wanted to make something beautiful, but yeah. now we're understanding. Or you're now you're, we're, st we're we're starting to figure out maybe more understanding why we did it in retrospect and understanding right. how to talk about it a little bit more too. And a lot of that's hearing from comments yes. and surveys and yes. listening to people say really deep stuff. <laughs> Some funny stuff too on their uh, on the comments. Yeah, but like we've had we have a um, owner survey out right now. Mm -hmm. Grant, you can talk a little bit about that. Yeah. But, uh, but that 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 is it is highlighting. Uh, it's reinforcing why we do what we do, and what we're why we're doing it is we're trying to create something that is about the experience of doing it. So it's it's like doubling down on. So why do we ride a motorcycle? Do we ride a motorcycle to have all these extra experiences of like, oh my engine's really fast and uh, the screen is the big. screen is really big yeah. on my car or the uh, it has a really nice infotainment system, or are we doing it to enjoy the essence of what two-wheel travel can do? And that same thing is, so that's, that's for riding. The same thing is true of here. It's like, what is it about making or manufacturing that's enjoyable? It's making things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how do you make things in the, in, in the most essential way? It's yep. by hand. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, for example, like our fenders, Brent making our fenders, or uh, the way that these bi bikes are built, they're not, it's not an assembly line where we're or the other Brent tuning a, tuning a true wheel. wheel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, we're getting better at talking about that. You'll probably see where we're going to be. We've, I, we've just made a, a blog post mm -hmm. uh, a couple of days ago talking about that very activity, the, uh, the experience of riding. And you'll see more of that soon. And what was that uh, quote that you told me about that sailing book? And you said a good sailboat is one that. Yeah, a, a, there, there are some old guys talking about uh, L. Francis Hershoff, who is the son of Nat Hershoff, famous yacht designer in uh, New England. And he was trying to describe, I mean, a, a man who knew everything about designing and sailing boats. He, you know, uh, the quintessential designer's designer. 
And the same thing is true. Hey, Bree. The same thing is true of of a motorcycle. We've we've on our podcast, which I recommend if you haven't checked it out, you should you should uh, uh, give it a listen. We talked. We try and talk to motorcycles, mo motorcyclists, motorcyclists. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. They, that really uh, have something to say about motorcycling. But anyway, L. Francis Hirschhoff was trying to describe what a good boat is, and it, it rung a bell with me in light of motorcycles. He said, "A good boat is a boat that." gives you the experience of sailing. Mm -hmm. And it, that seems kind of like basic, but when you think about it, let's t put it in motorcycle terms, a, a good motorcycle is one that is best at giving you experience of riding on two wheels with a engine. And mm -hmm. that really start kind of like can make you kind of think about what is extraneous to riding a motorcycle. Yeah. Is, is, riding, is, is, is the thing about riding a motorcycle going being able to go 180 miles an hour or is it more about the kind of riding that we all do mm -hmm. most of the time and yeah. getting the most out of that? Um, the, uh, yeah. I always go back, my background's in photography, and I always go back to the, you know, use that as an analogy. That's my hobby. Sailing is yours. Uh, and a great camera is one that is really fun to make a picture on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's why some people still love the, even if it's kind of a retrofit, you know, I shoot on Fuji cameras and all the little dials and like making a picture, the act of making a picture is what makes a good camera. It's not megapixels or screen right. and size. Right, the industry or, is, yeah. it will, will tell you for a variety of reasons that you need all these very, very, very advanced features, which potentially a great professional photographer will be able to use, understand yeah. and use all those Features. Someone on the sidelines of the NCAA Final Four. Right, with their huge yeah. lenses and all that right. stuff. But for the average user, what they want to get out of a camera, they can probably get out of just about any camera. A Pentax SLR from right. 1982. <laughs> <Yeah>. Same <laughs> thing is true. more distilled uh, essence of it, too. Yeah, and yeah. same thing is true with, with motorcycles. At least that's our that's argument. Our, that's uh, our argument. <laughs> that, <laughs> yep. that, that the, the essence of riding is feeling the sensation of riding. Mm -hmm. um, so... That should give you a little uh, hint about what a hardtail, why we have a hardtail yeah. <laughs> motorcycle. It's a pretty direct <laughs> sensation, yeah. <laughs> Visceral. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, 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 let's do it. Questions. Um, Scott would like to know what happens if one of our vendors is not available, is not available for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. Is there any way So uh, the question is, um, Scott has asked, what happens if one of our vendors is not available for a long period of time? Um, and we're always working on backups. So. Yeah, that's actually something we're, we're, we're working on is always having some redundancy in that. But um, the nice thing about the Amish community is that, especially, let's say, on the, in light of the milk run, is mm -hmm. they don't really travel a whole lot. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they're very uh, tied <laughs> to their community, and, and they're very reliable. Um, so as far as local stuff, we really, all we have to do is make sure that uh, we, uh, let, we know when their religious holidays are and that we won't be drop picking up mm -hmm. parts on that time. Um, and then let's say, for example, like, uh, overseas vendors, you know, we have to sometimes be be ready to order things yeah. well enough in advance right. for like Chinese yeah. New Year or Correct. stuff like that. Jacqueline's uh, today is March seventeenth. If you ask Jacqueline, our purchasing manager, today was September seventeenth. I mean, she's always thinking, yeah. and sometimes it's March seventeenth of twenty twenty four to her. She's always thinking uh, at least six months and sometimes a year ahead. Yep. Uh, and that's why she's sitting in that seat. <laughs> no uh, more questions? So. Yeah. Are we going to be selling baseball caps? Yes. Yeah. We've got some fun stuff in the works. Watch out. We're probably going to do another little pre. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry. Will we be selling baseball caps? Yes. Just in time for baseball season. Um, got a fun little spring uh, pre-order in the works for some updated designs. And it's always a great way to do it because it helps us dial in how much uh, how many we should order and uh, how awesome the thing is going to be. So if you were one of the people that got one of the cool Janus crewnecks that Jordan's wearing right now behind the camera, uh, same thing will probably be happening there here. Is. Hey, Jordan. Ooh. Nice job. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I know. Um, can you talk to us about uh, California? Do we have any dealerships? Yes. Do we have any test driving in California? Do we have any that's a great segue into <laughs> what's going on uh, through the spring and summer. This summer, uh, Antonio, we do not have any dealerships right now. Uh, in California or in, elsewhere. Yep, in California or elsewhere. 
We, uh, I tell people YouTube is our dealership. Welcome to our dealership. Uh, you were in the front doors today. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we uh, have a couple things at play with that. One, if you want to see a bike, we have a lot of proud owners in California. A, we can a make lot it of, happen. Yeah, a lot of proud owners of multiple motors, multiple Janus motorcycles in California. They love to show off their bikes. Um, we can hook you up with somebody that uh, would talk you through the bike, talk you through their ownership experience. Two, we will be in California this July. We will be at Laguna Seca for motorcycle something uh, or other yeah. vintage days. Vintage, or, no, no, it's a... Uh, West Coast Bike Week. West Coast Bike and so Week. So there's an Arma event yep. and a um, Superbike uh, race Great. at Laguna Seca. Yep. We will also be in the middle of the desert here in Southern California for the Biltwell 100 at an old football field or something dusty. Uh, if you want to go camp out, it'll be like a small wood stock with motorcycles. With mini bikes and yep. small motorcycles. and Which yep. means fun. Which yep. means fun. Yep. fun. And we will have a Griffin racing in the Biltwell 100 <laughs> yes. in a couple weeks. That's on April 1st. Uh, go to the Biltwell's website uh, to find out information about the Biltwell 100. Antonio said, I will be there. Great. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. Antonio also said he's big and tall. He weighs about 260 ish. Should he be all right on a 250? Absolutely. Okay. So, Antonio's question was he's uh, big and tall, um, weighs about 260 pounds. Uh, as someone who is around that uh, and has ridden across co cross country on a 250, uh, Weighing more than that, uh, yes, you're absolutely fine. The bikes are actually designed, I mean, I hate to make it sound super self-centered, but they really were designed to fit me. Um, so, <laughs> um, one of the complaints we get, you know, one of the things we're working on is actually making sure that they have a lower seat height, because that's one of the things we, we hear a lot. Um, but yeah, they're very comfortable for a larger rider. And as long as you're not trying to go, you know, 85 miles an hour, uh, the uh, 250 with a larger guy is perfectly fine, they'll mm -hmm. get you up to top speed. It's kind of like uh, the, the 250 in terms of power, it, it just kind of maxes out at a certain speed. Like I ride, uh, I've done some really long distance rides with a guy who's smaller than me, uh, has less wind resistance and weight. And uh, we both, when, you, when they're wide open throttle, I mean, it's, sometimes I have to kind of approach down to get the same wind resistance, but they're gonna go about the same speed. So. Uh, 65 miles an hour is probably once yep. the bike is really broken in 65, 70 miles an hour is your, and you can just hold it open like that and go all day. What is Janice's involvement with the upcoming Distinguished Gentleman's Ride? We Great support question. all Janice owners in taking part in their local Distinguished Gentleman's Ride. We will work up a fun little goodie to send you if you post pictures and participate. Yeah, and let's just say a word about the, the DGR, mm -hmm. it's called. It was founded, uh, I think it's probably almost 10 years ago now in Australia. And it's a uh, ride, it's not just for men, it's called the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride, but it's for men and women. Um, and it's an um, incredible- and We've seen dogs there too. And dogs and sidecars. Yeah. Uh, it's an incredible event where you can dress up, look your best. Uh, people put, you know, put on three piece suits and bow ties and have you know, their pipe or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you take out your classic style mo motorcycle. So anything vintage or cafe racers, Janice's are literally the perfect bike, uh, Triumph, uh, sponsors it, but I think we're even more appropriate uh, for the event. And there's usually one in any major city uh, around you, and you can go to, to that, and it's a fundraiser for men's health. So for, uh, uh, what, what are all the different things? Prostate, mental, uh, other health issues. Other health <laughs> things specific to men. It's a yep. really great cause, yeah. and we really support it. We're going to be participating this year in the Seth Bend one. That's that right? the plan. That's, That's the, the whole plan. plan. That's the plan. Yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, look it up online. Uh, it's a great cause. You can raise funds. We'll have a Janus Motorcycles. We will do this. We will have a Janus Motorcycles uh, group that you can mm -hmm. uh, So any funds we raise will be under Janus's name. Um, and it's just a great thing to support. Great. Um, anything else we need to talk through before we uh, wrap up? Any other questions? More questions? That we we have some exciting stuff coming on. Uh, we have several 450 inventory bikes. Uh, coming up soon. Are we having connection issues, Hannah? Okay, good. Yep. Yep. Um, we, uh, so uh, if you're hot for a 450 yet this spring, uh, get in touch with us. We have lots of 250 owners that also get a 450. Gary's on here, he can attest. <laughs> um, you, uh, what do they say? You can never have enough, uh, 
enough motorcycles. Uh, I'm on board with that. Um, and Tony is asking if there's a date when we're doing California. Oh, right. The date for the California stuff. Uh, April 1st is the Biltwell 100. Um, so that's the Biltwell race coming up very soon. And uh, the, uh, oh my, is my audio dropping? Okay. Uh, and then uh, the Laguna Seca stuff is in July. Uh, hang in there for better. We'll post uh, up the dates. For more dates yeah. on that. Um, yep. I think we're, our sound's all out. Okay. Um, one, what's up, Jordan? Mark Bass. Can people order jams in the office? Thanks for the uh, alley oop, Mark. Yes, they can. <laughs> I almost brought out this awesome purple fender that our guy Poncho ordered. And uh, he's getting purple, custom purple color with orange and red pinstripes. Which matches his sailboat. Which matches his sailboat. That is the ideal <laughs> Janus customer <laughs> named Poncho. Um, you can get, uh, basically, we have a, the RAL range. If you've ever uh, bought a motor, uh, painted a car or anything, <laughs> really, with industrial grade paint, the RAL range is kind of the industry standard, and we have a pretty big book of RAL colors that we can get in powder coat, and an even bigger boat, book of uh, pinstripe colors that we can get. So a lot of times people will pick a zany color to pinstripe their normal bike, like charcoal you can get wacky with, hunter's orange, uh, teal, pink, uh, whatever you want on pinstripe. If your weirdness level does, extends beyond your pinstripe, Thickness, uh, you can pick a zany color for your powder coat, too. Um, so that's the answer to that. Yeah. Uh, wow, no other manufacturer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, He's not Mark a plant, thing. I promise. He's not a plant, <laughs> an audience plant. Um, yeah. uh, one other thing, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of going to be experimental at this point, but Sunday night at 7 or 8, oh, uh, yeah, 7 o'clock, we're going to do, uh, I will do a live stream, um, and I'm going to be, it's just going to be kind of hanging out answering questions, um, and primarily I'm going to be doing some design work on Onshape, our design software. Um, so come on by, have a beer, hang out for a bit if you want. Um, it's just an experiment. We're, we're not really sure how it's going to go, um, but we're thinking maybe do that more regularly. Um, so That's afternoon, uh, so people can bring, bring their drinks, right? Yeah. yeah, it's 7 in the evening. Great, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Yep. More, whiskey, you know, whatever yep. you care for, so whatever <laughs> your flavor is. Yep. Awesome. Well, that's a great uh, way to end. See you on Sunday. That'll be on Facebook, right? Uh, probably YouTube. YouTube, sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. YouTube. Yep. Scratch that. Can you, can you edit this? <laughs> We're live? <laughs> Are you kidding me? We're live? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It'll be on YouTube again Sunday evening, 7 p.m. Great. Uh, tell Antonio you should give Mitch a call. Antonio, please give Mitch a call. We would love to talk to you through stuff. James, please give Mitch, Mitch a call. We would love to sell you a 450. Mark, please give us a call. We would love to sell you 300 450s. Uh, we can make that bike, you can make it at 300, no, 600 bikes you've owned in your life. Yeah. Real quick. Thanks for the kind words, Mark. Uh, can't wait to see some awesome photos of all our new 450 customers uh, riding around the country this year. So yeah. um, we'll see you all next time. We are here for you. If you need anything, take the survey. If you're a Janus owner, uh, it all went out uh, via our mail blast uh, a couple days ago. It's really great for us to help uh, improve and learn and uh, hear from you all. So, yeah. see you later. Thank you all so much for great. getting on. Happy Friday. Go have a Guinness.